Hello everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, it's my recent reads. And remember, before we get talking, give it a thumbs up. Show me some love. Show MJ some love. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, if you enjoy my content, think about doing so. All right. How's your week going? Yeah, mine's all right. It's good. Busy. But best part about it is reading books. So let's talk about what I've read in the last week. So the first book that I finished was A Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. Wasn't sure exactly what I was going into. Um... It starts off really, really well. So we have two, I think two main characters. We have Sasha and Benny. And Sasha works for Benny. And we're introduced to her first. And then we're introduced to Benny. And then from there, we go out to another layer of connected relationships. And then we go another layer. So each section of this book kind of connects. It's almost like a connect the dots and you're, you're trying to find out what's going on and whose perspective am I in now, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But the bottom line is that it talks about um, uh, getting older and how it is inevitable. And one thing I found super interesting with this book, this is the kind of book that I think I want to revisit. Because they did get into... Um, like some string theory, not string theory, but they got into some science about how things happen. And it was it happened in like a huge footnote. And then towards the end of the book, they had all kind of graphs and stuff like that. So I actually screenshotted a few. So I'll put them in here so you can see what I'm talking about. But um, did I enjoy the book? I enjoyed the first half of the book more than the second half. I think I was just trying to find my way and I'm trying to connect with a character and I, I, ha I had to make little connections with little characters, if that makes sense. Um, I believe it won the Pulitzer Prize, perhaps. It is a prize winner. Um, so I gave it on Goodreads. Let's get into the Goodreads. I've got Frankenstein on here now. A Visit from the Goon Squad. I gave three stars. Yeah. So this is the book that I said in a previous video about the scribe. Um, this was the first book that I was reading with the scribe and I actually went in and I annotated a whole bunch of stuff. But because it's from a library, my footnote, well, my highlights stayed. So my highlights stayed. But all of the little handwritten notes that I made into the ether. I don't have them. I don't have access to them. I wonder if I take the book out again from the library, if they'll come back. I'm going to have to try that. Okay. But yeah. And I mean, it was just, it was just a lot. I was trying to make the connections with all the different people and you know, all that. Um, so I will read you, I'll read you the blurb. My hair has a mind of its own today. Jennifer Egan's spellbinding, interlocking narratives circle the lives of Benny Salazar, an aging former punk rocker and record executive, and Sasha, the passionate, troubled young woman he employs. Although Benny and Sasha never discover each other's past, the reader does. In intimate detail, along with the secret lives of a host of other characters whose paths intersect with theirs over many years. And that's basically, that's basically the gist of it. So then let's get into what I started and I finished Women Talking. This was a buddy read with Crystal at Fiber Artsy. Um, this is, I believe it's going to be a movie. Uh, now, I don't know when it's going to come out, but I think Frances McDormand might be in it. Um, so this is actually, it's, it's a really powerful book. It is a fictional account of true events that happened um, to a community uh, of women. I will read you the blurb 
so I don't want to misspeak it. Mm, okay, based on real events, Women Talking is the story of eight women in a remote Mennonite colony who faced an agonizing decision in the aftermath of a series of unspeakable sexual crimes. One evening, eight Mennonite women climb into a hayloft to conduct a secret meeting. For the past two years, each of these women and more than a hundred other girls in their colony have been repeatedly violated in the night by demons coming to punish them for their sins. Now that the women have learned they were in fact drugged and attacked by a group of men from their own community, they are determined to protect themselves and daughters from future of harm. Based on real events and told through the minutes of the women's all-female symposium, I'm going to mispronounce her name. It's not pronounced how it's spelled. Um, I want to say it's Troves. Troves, maybe? Uh, masterful novel uses wry politically engaged humor to relate this tale of women claiming their own power to decide. This event happened in 2009, I believe. When you are reading this, when I'm reading it, I thought that I was in 1700s, 1800s. I had, this was first published in 2018, but the events between 2005 and 2009, that wasn't that long ago that this is happening. Um, but the women that are speaking are speaking because they are in a Mennonite community and it's more sheltered. They don't have modern amenities. They don't have a lot of modern technology. Um, it is very faith-based. Um, it is a communal living situation. Um, the, the men, and there's just different norms and mores that go through um, the book. I had issues with this book. First of all, our narrator, I don't trust him. Uh, I didn't connect with him. I didn't like how he was supposed to be this person that was transcribing the meaning that was happening. Mm, but then he had personal issues. I just didn't. He wasn't my cup of tea. He wasn't my cup of tea. I just didn't. I didn't like him being there. I wish they had a female narrator to the story. I had trust issues with it. That's all. The book absolutely is fascinating, interesting. Every once in a while, they would drop an F-bomb, one of the girls, and I was like, that's what brought me back to time. And I'm like, wait a second. They just, they just said, you know, MF. And I'm, I was like, what? What? And I'm like, oh, it didn't happen that long ago. I keep thinking like it happened, you know, 19, early 1800s, 1900s, something like that. But it didn't. Uh, and the women basically have this symposium, and they have to... Um, make a decision as to what is going to happen, what they are going to decide as a group to do. Do nothing, stay and fight, or leave. Those are the three um, choices that they have. And the women, most of the women, cannot read or write. So they have little pictures here. And that's what they were voting on. So I'm not going to spoil what happens. But if you're looking for something a little nonfiction, a little fiction. Um, if you're into, uh, if you are into movies and you want to get a jump start as to what this one is all about, we know Frances McDormand, she kicks ass. So I'm sure it's going to be absolutely stellar. Um, but fast read, it's only 216 pages. I mean, I, I did this in basically like over the course of two days. So, and that's with like life and doing things. <laughs> But I gave that I gave that four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. It, not the narrator. I didn't like him so much. I got issues. <laughs> okay. Next. Ooh, this was fun. Okay. So y'all know last week um, I was reading the book Married Lovers by Jackie Collins for the Wasted Weekend Garbages One Point Five. I DNF'd a Jackie Collins book. Because it wasn't, it just wasn't doing it for me. It was dry. It was boring. There was a lot of 
character setup and there wasn't a lot of Jackie Collins in the book just yet. And I'm like, I was bored, really. I was bored. Uh, so I'm like, okay, what book can I get that's kind of on the same vibe, but maybe a little bit different? So I was closing, I actually closed down my Audible last week. And I was able to listen to the evident, or Evidence of the Affair. And this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And we all know Taylor Jenkins Reid. She writes some pretty good stuff. Um, Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six. Good, good, good quality writing. This is a fantastic piece. So I would categorize it more like a novella. It is under 100 pages. And it is the telling of an affair between two people via letters. Dear Stranger, a desperate young woman in Southern California sits down to write a letter to a man she's never met, a choice that will, that will forever both change their lives. My heart goes out to you, David, even though I don't know you. The correspondence between Carrie Alsop and David Mayer reveals piece by piece the painful details of the devastating affair between their spouses. With each commiserating scratch of the pen, they confess their fears and bear their souls. They share the, be the bewilderment of how things went so wrong and come to wonder where to go from here. Told entirely through the letters of two comforting strangers and of those two illicit lovers, evidence of the affair explores the complex nature of the heart and ultimately for one woman how liberating it can be when it is broken. And the timeline for this is like 1977. So this is in 1977 where there's no email, no cell phones, no nothing. And it's just a pen pal exchange about um, what happened to their spouses. And it's gripping. It is well, well done. So I gave that four stars. And that was Evidence of the Affair by Jinket, or I'm sorry. Taylor Jenkins read. Love that. And what else? Today, I dove into something a little different. I, I don't know where I saw this book. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know I saw it on a channel recently and I wrote it down. I want to say it might have been Matthew, a man with a hat who reads. Don't quote me on that, though. It might have been his channel. Um, the Ballad of Black Tom. So this is a story by Victor Lavelle. There was a lot of interesting elements to this book. I really wasn't sure. I didn't know what exactly to expect when I was going into it. I wanted to get something a little urban, a little spooky, like urban gothic. Is that a thing? Is that a vibe? I don't know. And it kind of, it was really, really entertaining it was gripping and it had a lot of different layers that I wasn't expecting so I'll read you the blurb for this people move to New York looking for magic and nothing will convince them that it isn't there Charles Thomas Tester hustles to put food on the table keep the roof over his father's head from Harlem to Flushing Meadow to Red Hook he knows what magic what magic a suit can cast the invisibility a guitar case can provide and the curse written on his skin that attracts the eye of wealthy white folks and their cops. But when he delivers an occult tome to a reclusive sorceress in the heart of Queens, Tom opens a door to a deeper realm of magic and earns the attention of things best left sleeping. I really enjoyed it. When I was going into, I didn't give it a Goodreads review. I usually don't give reviews on Goodreads just nobody nobody's gonna read them so I just do the star rating and you know call it a day but I remember seeing this categorized as a retelling of a Lovecraft story so I think I want to read the Lovecraft story at some point and then come back and read this again this wasn't a very long book it was about three hours uh and I just thought it was so different and I haven't read anything like this in a long time Victor Laval is a person of color and this story highlights people of color and I love that. I absolutely love that. So, um, four out of five stars. I thought it was good. So if you know the story that this is based on by Lovecraft, comment down below and let me know. And have you read both? 
And do you get a deeper meaning if you read the Lovecraft and then came back and read this? Let me know. All right. So four books this week. I'll take it. Good ones too. So let's see. What do I have coming up this week? Psychic Teenage Bloodbath by Carl John Lee. Um, that will be starting. I think that's going to be a shorter book as well. I also have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Um, I have The Unbearable Lightness of Being that someone recommended to me, and that is a library book. So I have two weeks left on this, so I'm probably going to hold... I don't know if I'll... Maybe I'll start this over the weekend. Um, and this is by Milan Kundera. Right? Yeah. Psychic Teenage Bloodbath, I really want to get to first. That is an extreme horror book, and it's been a minute since I had an extreme horror, so let's read it. Okay, so that's all I have here. Hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're reading awesome things. Let me know what you're reading for this week. This week, I'm probably going to do reading sprints, too. I'm going to do reading sprints. Maybe early Saturday morning. Like, stupid early. Maybe I'll call them stupid o'clock reading sprints. I'm up anyway, so why not read with friends? That's what I say. All right, comment down below if you love reading sprints. Okay, everyone, a little on the boring side, but you know, it's been a week. It's been a minute. It's, it's only right now it's Wednesday and you're watching this Wednesday night or Thursday. So I hope you're reading, reading awesome books. Make sure you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, whether it be sooner or later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now.